TypeScript offers many powerful types which make our lives much easier, but some of them are just lacking one or two features I'd like them to have. So let's fix them one at a time and let's start with the fetch type. So before we start to enhance the fetch typings, let's see what the issues are with the current ones. So let's say we have an API URL here, any URL. So let's call fetch here with this API URL. Now we say then here and we have our response and we say response.json like this. Now let's see the response we get here. We can see we get back promise any. So why is this? Well, because the response JSON can basically be anything because the call to the API can basically return any kind of data. So what should be the approach to do this currently? We can say, for example, we have a type to do and this has a user ID, which is a string, title, which is a string and a completed, which is a Boolean, for example. And what we then should do is we, we should say as promise and to do like this. Now, when we use it like this, we can see that we now get back a promise with a generic type to do. So this works fine, but I don't really like this approach because I have to do this all the time. And in reality, when I work at a project, I really often know what kind of response I get. And if I don't get this response, then it will throw an error and I will catch it in the catch clause. So basically this is the first thing I don't really like about the fetch typings. And I think this could be improved. So what are these issues here? So the first thing is we say no generic response type here. Now, the second thing is, well, let's see what we can add to this fetch function here, right? We can add here a method, for example. Now, the first thing we see is we can pass in anything to this method because this method is just not typed. Basically, it allows any string you want. It does not just allow the HTTP verbs. And this is okay because maybe it's a little bit more forgiving, but I often just really use the given HTTP verbs and I don't think I have ever used anything else. So it would be cool to have like an auto completion for this. And the second thing is when I have a body here, this could be anything, basically could be an array, a blob or something like this, but it can also be a string. Now, when I say here get and I have a body, this is often a code smell for me because yeah, it's allowed that you send a body with a get request, but you should not really do that. It's not really the best practice because a get function basically should just get new data and it should just use the URL, but not really should pass anything like this. So I would really like that I should not be able to pass in a body if I use a method here, which does disencourage the use of bodies. So the second would be that I want a type safe method. And the third one is body not always allowed. Now, okay, this is the second thing which I don't really like. So let's see what we also have here. We have the headers and the headers here, if we check what the typings are allowed is, this is a so-called headers in it, which is allowed. So let's check this out. So this either allows a tuple, an array of tuples, which has two elements in it, or a record, which the key is a string and the value is also a string, or like a headers object. Now, this is perfectly fine because you need to be able to pass in any header you like. But I often have a hard time remembering what these headers are named and what I should pass to them to make them work. So what I would really like to have is like an auto completion for the most often used types, for example, for content type, and that the value also is like predetermined and give me some auto completion. So for example, that I also have the MIME types available here. That I don't have to say application JSON like this without having a check if this is a valid MIME type or not. So this is like the fourth one is type safe headers like this. So let's start with the first issue and let's try to fix this. So how do we get started? Well, what we need to do is we need to be able to make this fetch function generic and this JSON here should then not return an any, but just should return the real type we pass in. So how can we start extending the fetch type? So what we do is we check the current declaration here and let's just copy this function. Now what we do next is we just paste it in here and now we can start to work with it. Now let's first make this on three lines to split this up a little bit. Now what we need here is we need to change this response and by changing I mean extending it. So what we say here is we say interface typed response and we then say extends response like this. Now we can override some of these function types. Now, of course, what we need to do is we need to be able to pass in a generic type here. So we, of course, need to say we have this T here we want to pass in. And now we need to override this JSON function. So we say JSON here and we say promise T 
T like this. Because now what we will do is we will take this generic type we pass in and use it in our JSON function type to return then this generic type. So now let's use this in our function here in our declare function. So we say we pass in that response type here, which is a generic type, and we say equals any. What this means is if we don't pass in anything, it will default to the any type so that this will work as before. We can see here that our call here works perfectly fine. It still returns promise to do everything good. Now, the next thing is we need to use this response type in this promise response here. So we say typed response and pass in our response type like this. Now we can use this already in our fetch function. And we say here, instead of just returning nothing from our generic, we pass in our to do. Now we don't need this casting here anymore. And we can remove this like this. And now we can see that we still get back the type response of type to do. And the promise here is also of type to do. So now we have like a type response type and we can change it here and let TypeScript know what kind of response we will get from our request. So this really solves the first issue with the non-generic response type. So now we can pass in a generic here and then TypeScript will figure out what type of promise we will get back. So now we have done the first thing here. So this is done, the no generic response. Now let's check how we can make this type safe method here. So we have this method get here. So what we need to do is we need to override this string type with a real HTTP verbs type. So what we say here is type HTTP verbs and we say this is either post or put or delete or update or get or connect or head or options like this. Now with this, we have all possible HTTP verbs in our code. Now what we need to do with them is we have to split them in two groups. The one group is the one which allows bodies and the other ones which doesn't. And of course, this is just like my implementation, how I use it. Of course, you can also say that you want to allow for get to have a body. You're completely free to make these two groups as you want them. So, but what we now can say is we have a one with body and now we need to extract the ones from the HTTP verbs, which should have a body. So we say extract, we say HTTP verbs and we say we take post and put and delete and update like this. Now we can create the inverse from it. So we can say non-body and we can say exclude and we pass in our HTTP verbs and say we want to exclude everything with body here. So now we have these two groups and now we need to just add them to our method. So how can we now achieve this? We can use these with body, non body groups with the never type. I've already created a video about the never type. You can find it in the info box and in the description below. But what we will do is we say a method body combination like this. And what we now will do is we will use the never type to let TypeScript know what kind of combinations we want to allow. So we say method here, and this is with body here. So in case we pass in a with body type, then we say body question mark because it's always optional. And then we say request in it body. Now, what are we doing here with this request init body? We are accessing the type of the type property body from the request init type. And we can see here, we are using the request init in our fetch function, the existing one. So because in this case, we don't want to change anything in our body type, but otherwise, and we use a union type here, we say in case where the method is of type non-body, we say body here also with a question mark because it's optional again, we say Never. So in case where we pass in something else, then post, put, delete, or update, we don't want to allow a body. So let's now use this in our request init type. So we will enhance this request init type by extending it. And we say we have a type here and let's call this type typed request in it. And we say request in it because we take everything which exists and add an intersection type and say we want to add our method body combination. Now we can see nothing changed here, of course, because we are not using it. So let's go up here in the request in it and prefix this with typed request in it. And now maybe you have already spotted what happened. Line 13 does no longer compile because we have this get method where a body in our case is not allowed. So if I change this here to 
post like this, we can see this is allowed again. And because of that, we now also have fixed the third issue we had, where we had to check if the method here we have allows body properties. Now we can see here that the second issue also is of course fixed because we can see that we have auto compilation for all the possible methods. And if I put in something wrong, which does not exist, then I get an error because the method property has a wrong type here. Now we can see here we have already solved the issues one, two, and three. So now let's also fix the type safe headers. So how can we fix this? What we need is we need to have some headers which are like predefined and then we can add them to the existing headers type. So how can we do this? Well, the first thing we'll do is we create a new type prepared headers and in here we will create these headers we want to have auto completion for. So let's say content type, let's say string here and we say except we also want to have string in here and also have something for the hardest one for me, authority Station like this. This is always the hardest one for me even to spell right. And now we have this and we can use these prepared headers to enhance our headers auto completion. The first thing we do is we create a new type typed headers like this and we say, well, we want to keep all our existing types we have in our headers and we want to say we add our prepared headers like this. And now we can use this typed headers type in our typed request in it. So let's go down here and let's go into our typed request in it. And we just add a new intersection here and we say we have our headers here, which is optional. And we say we add our typed headers here. Now we will see an issue here because when we scroll up here, we can see we get an error here for our headers. Now, when we check the error here, we can see that we get a strange error with content type string is not assignable to type undefined. Why is this? Well, it's because we basically tell TypeScript, hey, if we have something in our headers here, we need to have all of them. But of course we don't need to. So we say we have a partial here and we wrap this in a partial and now we can see our code compiles fine. Now, because of this, we have now auto completion. We have this except here we can use and we can use anything in here we want because it's a string and we have also the auto completion for authorization, but we are still allowed to pass in anything we want here because we do not restrict it to only the prepared headers, but we just add auto completion and type safety to these existing types, which I really like. So you don't have to like choose what you want to do. If you want to have only the headers you specify or if you want to have every possible header you want. So, but now we have only one thing which is missing, the value here. I don't really like that I can add anything I want in there. So let's just add the MIME types. So of course I will not create these manually, but I've created a file, you can find it in the, in the description below, which I will now paste in here so that we have all the MIME types which are often used. So I have this union type here, which has all the possible MIME types we want to use. And now what we can do here is in the prepared headers, we say we don't want to allow just any string. We want to allow the MIME types and for the except the exact same. We say MIME types here. And now we can see here, we get an error again because the except here only allows these types. And we now have auto completion for this. So we can say JSON and we can say application JSON like this. Now, of course you could add a char set here. And of course, then you would have to change the MIME types, but to keep it simple, you could use it like this to have a type which has all the possible MIME types and then use it like this. So now let's recapitulate a little bit what we have achieved. We have now this fetch type here, which is generic. So you can pass in the response type you want to have returned to you. And because of that, you don't have to specify this as promised to do anymore here in the den. Now, additionally, what we have is the method here is now strictly typed. So we have to get post, post, head or everything else we want to have. Then the body here is only allowed for certain methods. If we have, for example, a get method, then the body is not allowed anymore. And what we also have is we have here type safe headers where we can just add more information here. And we could even say this is, for example, a template literal where we can say this is a bearer prefix and then has a string in there. And then if I would have to use here this authorization like this, then it would have to have a bearer prefix to work or otherwise it would throw an error. 
And we have achieved this with very little code. And I think it's really easy to understand how this code works. And of course, it always depends on the taste. If you like this kind of typing, you don't have to use this, of course. You, of course, also can create your own function where then call the fetch function and do the typing all in your own function. But I really like this approach because I think it makes the fetch type much easier to work with. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, maybe leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date about more TypeScript stuff. And if you want a certain topic to be covered in future videos, just let me know in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye.